Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 8th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Print Nightmare, well, the Nightmare is sort of over, but not quite yet, uh, with the patch released yesterday by Microsoft. So just a quick update on the patch. As I'm recording this, all versions of Windows, all the way back to Windows 7, should have the patch available. That was a little bit confusion during the day and a couple delays, I guess, on Microsoft's side to actually get the last couple operating systems patched up. But yes, it should be available now for all operating systems that are affected and still somewhat supported by Microsoft. With, of course, Windows 7 being actually not quite supported anymore, but the Microsoft sometimes does it where they do push out critical patches like this, even for unsupported versions of operating systems. However, the patch doesn't fully address the vulnerability just by applying the patch itself. To understand that, let's recap what's actually the problem here. The problem is that a normal user is able to supply a printer driver. And there is one particular feature in Windows that requires the user to actually supply a printer driver. And this is uh, the point and print a feature that is enabled by default. In order to completely fix the problem, you have to disable point and print. Microsoft also did introduce a new registry setting in order to limit who is allowed to install drivers. Restrict driver installation to administrators is the setting. And uh, well, uh, if you set that to one or true, uh, then uh, the administrator is the only user allowed to install printer drivers. Highly recommend uh, installing or setting uh, this registry value because it also does get to the root of the actual problem here that random users are able to install printer drivers. In addition, if a printer driver is not digitally signed, the administrator has to approve it. And even if a client downloads a printer driver from a print server, if the printer driver is not digitally signed, again, administrator approval is required. I don't think uh, these change in functionality will really cause any problems, but as any change in functionality, yes, there is a chance if you have an odd printer that does not use digitally signed printer drivers for whatever reasons that uh, yes, you may run into some issues here. In general, administrators can still install those drivers, so you can still work around this and users really never should sort of just upload code to a server and run it. That's really what installing a printer driver does in particular run that code as system. So in short, as quickly as possible, do install the driver, disable point and print, and set the registry value, restrict driver installation to administrators uh, to one. And then we got nothing really sort of fundamentally new about Kaseya, but uh, if you do want to use that supply chain keyword in order to get resources, well, use those resources to patch GitLab. If you're running GitLab, there are a number of vulnerabilities that have been fixed that were reported via bug bounty programs uh, to GitLab. Nothing super critical, uh, it's denial of service vulnerabilities, but also a cross-site request forging vulnerability that uh, with a creative attacker could certainly uh, be exploited. And let's stick with the supply chain uh, theme here for another story. And this time it's again about third-party libraries, but no, it's not NPM uh, this time. For all of these popular languages, of course, there is some form of more or less official repository that developers are using in order to download additional libraries. For .NET, this is NuGet. NuGet is a Microsoft supported mechanism to download additional packages. 
And Carlos Sankey with Reversing Labs now uh, took a closer look at these packages and looked in particular at uh, different versions of 7-zip, WinSCP, and Putty Gen. There are a total of 264,000 packages in NuGet, and Carlo took a look at how many of them do include these components and if any of them are including outdated, vulnerable versions of these components. And of course, Carlo was successful and found numerous instances and in part also quite popular packages that are including these out of date components. So just like with any repository like this, but be careful what you're downloading and double check uh, what components also some of the components that you're downloading depend on. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And well, the reason I am recording these podcasts is because apparently there are people listening. So if you want to keep the podcasts coming, uh, please uh, make it more popular, get more people uh, to listen. That's it for today. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.